Hey guys, welcome back to Automotive Chaos. My name is Ryan. Where we left it last, we painted and prepped the frame for our 56 Bel Air. And today, we're going to be installing this pile of boxes onto that frame to put it underneath that car. So I'm going to open up all this stuff, show you guys what we have, and we'll get started. All right, so we got some brand new engine mount studs, some polyurethane bushings, brand new polyurethane body bushings, and some new body bolts. We've new leaf spring shackles and bushings for the front and rear eyelet. We have some one inch lowering blocks for the rear and new U-bolts. So I wanted to get new U-bolts, but then I figured if I'm gonna get new U-bolts, might as well just drop the back of the car a little bit while we're at it, right? All right, we also have brand new soft brake lines, one for each wheel cylinder in the front. And then this one is gonna go from the frame to the axle tube on the passenger side. Emergency brake cables. We had some wheel studs. If you guys watched the last video on the frame, you noticed on that axle flange that a few of them were missing and broken. So I punched those out. We'll press new ones in of 3 16 brake line with tube nuts to plumb the rest of the car. I have some quarter inch line in the garage as well. We've got brand new brake hardware for both front and rear wheels. And we've got brake shoes front and rear. Now, I have a full set of wheel cylinders for this car somewhere because I ordered them for my 55 before I went with the disc brake conversion. So I just have to find those in the garage, which that shouldn't be a big deal. It's pretty clean in there. I'll probably just order another set. Always good to have extras. All right, we got a set of tubular upper and lower control arms. And last but not least, I ended up going with coilovers for this car. And I'm immediately regretting my decision. So I've installed QA1s and Vikings on these cars. My 55 has QA1s. I think my dad's 57 has Vikings. And I went with a different brand this time. So when I install these, um, obviously we'll, we're going to put them in, in this video, but I might do another video on the breakdown of these and just, you know, for what my opinion is worth on them, having installed other name brand ones compared to this one. And we'll see if, uh, see if these are worth the money. But either way, they're going in this car. So I think that's everything that we have for now. I'm going to start at the back of the car. Because I'm, or back of the frame. I'm closest to it now. And uh, I'm already sweating. Just from filming those five or six boxes. So a little hot out today. But let's get started. Okay, I got the passenger side leaf spring off the frame. I ended up cutting the old U-bolts here. Um, I could not get them loose. And with having the frame on jack stands, if I really tried to get on it with a wrench, um, it started to shift the entire frame. But not a big deal. We cut those out. I have the shock plate down there. Uh, I also removed the old bushings from the leaf spring. Uh, this side that goes in the back of the shackles, you could just get out with a pick. On the front eyelet side, so this is the replacement bushing that we're going to be using, but this metal sleeve on the outside um, is actually a press fit in there. Um, I ended up taking it out with a die grinder and a carbide bit and just loosened it a little bit and then was able to just crush the bushing and pull it out. Uh, I tried doing it with the press in the back of the garage and the car's in the way and it was a pain to get the leaf spring on there. Um, I'm gonna have to do it for pressing the new ones in, but to get it out, I just uh, scored the, the bushing with a carbide bit and uh, pulled it out. And then after, I just went at it with the uh, my straight die grinder and the uh, round flap disc just to clean those holes up so we could press the new bushings in. So with this leaf all cleaned up, um, I'm gonna bring this back in the garage, trip over the countless tools and car parts I have in there, but we'll press the new eyelet bushing in up front. And then uh, once that's done, I'll come back. We'll hang it in the front of the frame and we'll get a new shackles on. All right, got the new leaf spring shackles on. 
the new front eyelet bushing is pressed in. Did run into a bit of an issue with the lowering blocks. Um, these are two and a half inches wide. And when I went to put this on the leaf spring, obviously underneath the pad on the diff, the width of the block basically spread the U-bolts out. So I was not able to tighten them down and still have them straight on the rear. So I think Belltech makes one that's two inches wide that will fit this car. And now that I think of it, I'm pretty sure that's what I used on the 57 that I did. So we'll order new blocks. Um, but at the very least for now, we have new U-bolts, new leaf spring shackles, new bushings. Um, next thing I'm going to do is start on the rear brakes. All right, so this union goes on this tab on the diff. And once you put that in, it might be hard to see from the angle I have you guys on in the camera. But once that's in, it won't allow this to turn. All right, so I'm going to take one of our retaining clips. And basically, once that's through the bracket, press on like that. It'll fit between these two small grooves, and it'll keep this locked in place. All right, so we have our union in place. Next thing is we'll put a brand new rubber line in. All right, and then this end is going to go onto our tab on the frame. All right, and then a similar method of retaining another clip. Soft line is in. We'll obviously tighten that up. Um, but with that in place, I can now go ahead and install the new wheel cylinders on the backing plates and then start to plumb this up. So I'm going to grab that, some fresh hardware, and I'll grab the line flaring tool and start making some brake lines. I get the wheel cylinder in actually only with one bolt right now because I can't find the hardware for them. Can't hurt to have new hardware. So um, today's actually the fourth. I'm not going to bother going to the store today. I'm going to enjoy some fireworks in a little bit. Um, but for now, I have it in with one bolt, threw a tube nut in there, tube nut in the union, and uh, now I'll take some of this fresh 3 16th line, get a rough measurement on length, and then uh, we'll remember to put these on either end of the line, flare it, and uh, we'll have one brake line done. Okay, rear brake lines are plumbed. Um, if your taste in vehicles resembles mine, and by that I mean questionable, and you find yourself constantly plumbing brake lines, this tool is worth every penny. It is expensive, it's about 300 bucks, give or take. Um, but for doing an entire vehicle like this, it saves a ton of time. So everything is flared, everything is tightened up. They said I'll grab new hardware for the wheel cylinders tomorrow. But we can move on to the next step, uh, which I think is going to be assembling our rear brakes. So I have all the new hardware for that. Can't decide if I want to do that or if I want to plumb the line up to the front of the car. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But we'll be back in a couple minutes when I finally decide what to do. Okay, I decided to run the brake line from the front to the rear. So that is all done. Next up, assemble the brakes. All right, I'm going to start by just putting our cable through our backing plate, like so. All right, and uh, after the brakes are done, I'll drive in the two new wheel studs that we have and clean the ones that are still good up. But for now, start getting these brakes together.
rear brakes are done. I gotta pop the emergency brake cable back in on this side. But with that finished up, we can move on to the front. Okay, I'm gonna start with the upper control arms and I'm just gonna give the uh, factory hardware that's pressed into the frame a light coat of WD-40. And then we're gonna go around or over the threads with a thread chase just to clean them up. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with the nuts. Okay, with those cleaned up, it's time to slide the control arm on. All right, I'm not gonna go super tight with these because we're still gonna have to play with the alignment. Name of the game now is just to get this back together. All right, so pretty straightforward. And obviously once everything's assembled, we'll go through and we'll grease everything and then everything that needs a cotter pin, we'll get a new one. All right, so with the upper on, I'm gonna move on and we'll toss the lower in. Okay, with both of our control arms in, next thing we're gonna do is install our coilover shock. Now, I already assembled this one, uh, and if you guys are interested, I'm gonna do a video on the other side, basically comparing this brand, which I think is Helix, it's like an eBay brand, to Viking and QA1, which I have also installed on these cars before. So if you guys are interested in that, um, I might do one next Friday on the other shock and the other side, just comparing the two. All right, so before we do that, I pulled the coil spring isolator out. Obviously we're not gonna need that because we're not gonna have a spring sitting in the pocket. It's gonna sit on the nut of the coilover. And the other thing I like to do, especially when installing these, is rather than relying on the tapped holes in the cup of the control arm itself, I'm gonna drill those out and I'm gonna nut and bolt them. Just because they hang on the bottom and having that weight basically pushing constantly down on those bolts makes me a little bit nervous. And these coilovers are the same ones that you guys have probably seen before pretty sure that they're manufactured overseas. So any advantage we can give ourselves, we will use. So I'll drill those out real quick and then we can start uh, fitting the shock up into the uh, lower control arm and then as well as the frame. Lower half of the shock is in place in the control arm. And hopefully I have enough room to slide this up, which it looks like I do. Okay, coilover is in. I uh, will say one thing with these, you do have to compress the spring a little bit, even with the collar adjusted all the way down. Um, that spring does not allow the shock to go all the way up. So I had to play around with the jack a little bit, but got that in. Uh, next up, I'm gonna clean the passenger side spindle. And uh, we'll go ahead, get that on, and then we can do a full nut and bolt on this side, make sure that everything's tight, we'll grease everything, toss some cotter pins in, and uh, hopefully we'll have at least one side done. Still have to do the driver's side, but like I said, I'm gonna wait and do the review of that other coilover. Um, but yeah, this thing is pretty close to being a roller again. Then we can uh, hopefully slide it underneath that car very soon. So I'll grab that spindle, clean that up, and uh, we'll toss that on. So the GoPro died there for a minute, but Upper and lower control arm are both in, coilover is in, 
spindle is on. I hooked up the brake line to the front wheel cylinder. Got a new clip for this one in here. So that's locked in. So quickly, I'm just gonna plumb uh, and flare a brake line for the passenger side wheel cylinder. And then uh, we can move on to motor mounts. And last up are motor mounts. So this is what came out of the frame. Could be better. And I ended up purchasing brand new hardware and we have some energy suspension polyurethane bushings in as well. So right where my thumb is, is gonna go through the frame. A little collar on that bushing will sit in and that bolt gets tightened up on the bottom and the motor mounts will sit up top once we're ready to put the engine in. So I'm gonna go and throw these in and uh, I think that'll do it for today. As it typically goes with working on older cars, especially cars that were in as bad a shape as this one was, you find yourself needing parts frequently. And the same holds true for today's video. So my intention was to get basically all of the suspension and steering put back together, have the frame rolling. Um, we're close, but I still need some brake hardware that I didn't realize. Actually, I forgot that when we pulled the driver's side apart, um, there was nothing in there. Um, and I ordered new hardware for that side, but it didn't come with everything. So I still need the little feet that go into the wheel cylinders. So we're missing that. Um, I ordered brand new drums. Uh, I thought they were going to be here today and not the case. So hopefully we'll have that tomorrow. Um, so the second part of this video, hopefully I'll have that done a week from today, which is Friday. Uh, we'll go over the coilovers that we're putting in this car and we'll finish up the brakes and the guy have like two more brake lines to go. So thank you guys as always so much for watching. It means a lot. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm enjoying doing it. I wish it was a little bit cooler, um, but we'll keep moving forward with this. So thank you guys again, and we'll catch you in the next one.